and welcome to Getting Candid with me, your girl Helen. You're joining me from the Outback Cafe in Woodlands. Remember to subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything that we upload on this channel. Today, Getting Candid is uh, taking a different approach. In that, um, having firstly, I'm having two people, I'm featuring two people, and we're not just having normal celebrity chat. It's really Getting Candid because I'm having two people that are here to share with us their life experiences, a deep story. I few weeks back, I think some two or three weeks ago, I featured uh, in the Mark II interview, we inserted another interview with a lady called Diane, the founder of Renewed Strength, an organization that is uh, meant to help people who have been sexually abused before. And today, so that day we, we didn't really talk in detail about what she's been through and what really inspired her to start that organization. So today she's here to share with us a full story of what she's been through that pushed her to say, let me start something like that. But also joining us today is uh, Chile Shawali, a gospel artist. Chile Shawali, we interviewed her some two years ago and she talked about how she was sexually abused growing up. But today she's here also to share her full story, hoping it helps somebody out there. Hopefully, because I believe if you're, not in, if you're not directly affected, you're not a victim, you may be affected because you may know somebody who's been through it. You may know somebody who needs help. Maybe the story today will help encourage them or help them open up and maybe they can start their healing. And I just hope, guys, this story may come to an end. So join me on the other side as I chat with the two ladies. Okay, so I mentioned that I'll be chatting uh, with two ladies. Uh, today is a different kind of game candy. We're not necessarily just talking about celebrity, what they're doing and uh, highlighting their thoughts and whatnot. Today I'm chatting to two ladies, Chile Shawalia, gospel artist, and Diane, who I, I, I had a chat with uh, two weeks, three weeks, I don't know, a month ago on the show. And she was telling us a story. She's uh, starting with new strength and all that, helping people, victims of rape, sexual harassment. And Chile Shawalia is also a victim. We had a chat with her, is it two years ago? Two, two years ago, two years? yeah. <laughs> yes, she, she, a little bit about that but today we thought to sit together and share the story and see how we can make this thing end yes end we need to wait towards that yes. hi. hi 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 how are you i'm good i'm happy to be back yes. yeah, i'm happy to have you again yes you. Yeah. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you so last time i talked to dad was really a short conversation she was just basically talking about renewed strength she didn't give us a full story but yes we asked people if they wanted to see her first to hear her full story and she's here to just give us a full story of what she has been through and why she was really prompted to start with new strength. We're also going to talk to Chile Shawali who's going to tell us her experience and how she got through that. It may just help somebody out there. You may know somebody who's affected or you may be the affected person. This may just be the one interview to help you. So, let me start with uh, Diane. We, we go to, uh, it prompted you to a point where you want to start an organization that helps big victims. How did this whole thing start? Yes, so for me, I felt when I was going through my, my journey of healing, I got to a point where I realized that I feel so drawn to want to share my experience and want to share my healing journey. I feel that it's so important for us to, to heal. We have to find our freedom through healing. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people don't mention is that when an untreated survivor of sexual abuse goes through life, we experience so many traumatic things, uh, mental, emotional health issues. I personally suffer from depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety disorder, mood disorders. And so there's all of these things that happen to us that I didn't know because of not healing. Yeah. And so my job here is just to, to share my story and let people know that healing is possible. It is absolutely possible and it's so worth it. It's so worth it. And you deserve to live a life that's fulfilling. Right. So, uh, uh, when was the first time, how old were you when you were sexually uh, harassed? Okay. So, I was six years old when the grooming started. Grooming is when the abuser is trying to gain our trust. Right. They take us to buy sweets, they take us for ice cream, they take us shopping, buy us a new dress, whatever it is, whatever it is, they try to gain our trust. Once they gain our trust now, that's when it starts happening. The accidental groping, 
you know, the hugs that last too long. Right. The, right. the, 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 you know, the grabbing of the butt, you right. know, just like, oh, you know, that's, that's small stuff. That's right. just inappropriate. Yeah. Um, once they realize that they can get away with those things, they now further on, now the molesting starts now. And now after the molesting starts and they see that, also not say anything. Also, she's keeping quiet, right? Yeah, right. Now, that's when, for me, my story got worse. So for me, it turned into full-blown rape at 12. So when he started, he didn't know he could go so far. Right. But once he started and he started seeing, like, okay, she's not saying anything, you know, um, a lot of times we get threatened, right. you know, with, with, oh, you know, uh, I'll kill your mom, I'll kill your brother if you tell anyone. But he didn't start that way. He started first saying, oh, this is how daddies show their daughters love. But when I got older, when he started realizing, oh, she's, I'm, I'm losing control of her, is when he started now, I'll kill your mom, I'll kill your brother. So it took some time. And from the first incident. How were you related to the abuser? Oh, he's my stepfather. Oh. Yeah, so unfortunately, he's still with my mom. And, you know, so I, I see him all the time. And it's just a matter of how we deal with it. You so know. it went on for how long? From the time I was six until the time I was 12. I disclosed my, my story when I was 12. And when you told your mom, you told your mom, is, is she the first person that you told? Who? No. So I, I lied to my mom to get her to come to the school because I knew that he couldn't touch me once I'm at school. Yeah. And so in America, the way things work is that when you disclose something such as this, the authorities have to get involved. Yeah. They have to. So what happened, I went to the school, my mom came with me, and I told my mom and my uh, principal, the headmaster, you guys call them headmasters. Yeah. Right. And because she had to call the authorities now, they went to arrest him. And then Children Protective Services has now come to obtain me because I can't go back home. Right. That's just how the system works over there. Uh, unfortunately, it's still fallible. It's th there's so many holes and cracks, and I was one of them. I fell through the cracks, and he was never charged. They dropped the case. My mom refused to testify. My mom refused um, to make any kind of case because he was the breadwinner, we need him, think of your brothers, your sisters, what are they gonna do without him, you know? We'll be homeless, just all kinds of things are, you know, and I'm 13. Yeah. To be asked yeah. to take on that type of responsibility. Yeah. I'm not responsible for your life. Yeah. You're the parent, yeah. right. you're responsible for that. So right. she didn't fight for you, how, no. how? So from that time, you never went back home? Ooh. No, she married me off. So I was I entered from one sexual abuse now into a child marriage. <laughs> How old were you when she married you? Off? I was fourteen. Wow. Yeah, and oh the guy was god. twenty. And the man was twenty. 20. Oh my god. Yeah. So they she felt like I can't have her in the home because he was still around and he was still child. He actually thought we were in a relationship. Like he's 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 really sick. And so he would still you know, you know, like, yeah, to yeah, try, yeah, it. stuff yeah. like that. And so when I told my mom that I couldn't take it, that's when she said, okay, you have a choice. You get married, you leave this house, or you go and stay with your dad. And my dad wasn't any better, unfortunately, so I chose to, to get married. And oh, wow. Yeah. 14, you're married, you, oh, you, you, wow. you literally have no idea what no. marriage is. Nothing. Right. Nothing. So how did that end? Not good. <laughs> um, when I reached an age where I was able to do things on my own, an age of 18, yeah. and that's when you can rent your own apartment, that's when you can buy your own car. You can... So when I started gaining some independence, I realized this relationship is not it's a not good right. one. Yeah. You know, it was a domestic uh, violence, uh, emotional abusive. Um, a mentally abusive relationship. It was just really bad. And so when I finally got the courage to leave, two kids later, um, I never looked back. Right. Never looked back. So, so from one abuse to another. That oh, was wow. my story. That, 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 that's a lot. 
It is. That, that's it a is. lot. And that's piling up a whole lot of things. A lot. Especially yeah. if you look like the best, the person who's supposed to protect you, your mother, doesn't it's seem to. Like it for you. For, right. Yeah, I think. I grew up with having no self value, yeah. no self worth, no self love until I was 35. Wow. Okay, so before we get the healing, I want uh, Chilesha when you to also share your, your story, how it started, how you. Okay, um, also at six years old, but for me it was just cutthroat, right into it. So, I mean, obviously your parents give you the person at home, they trust this person to take yeah. care of you. Um, I, I don't really like to say who it is because, for, because of his kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but he's related to you. Yes, definitely family, definitely close family. Um, so, this is, like she said, there's always the grooming. So this person starts with little touches here and there, little jokes and things like that, inappropriate jokes. You know, that, you know and this is why I hate when uncles call little kids my wife. Yes. My, yeah. You know, things, things like that. And you start to trust the person, and eventually they, it's, it's, you're a kid, so they buy you sweets, they, they buy you this, and what he would do for me is he would put porn shows on TV, Six make you watch old. that stuff, and then tell you you need to do what they were doing on the show. So it was everything from actual penetration to oral sex and whatever it oh is. God. And this, and I, I'm able to recount this now with a smile on my face. It was, it, it, it was disgusting. It's disgusting. Still. It still is. Yeah. But I mean, like you said, the the healing kind of gets you to a place where you're able to now share it, and because you need to share it because yes. other people yeah. need to know they're not alone first of right. all, and also that you can heal from it. But yeah, so it, it went to that point. The the threats. If you tell anyone, I'm gonna kill your mother. And for me, that was the biggest part. That was the scariest thing because my mom is like my world, yeah. you know, and um, knowing what this person is capable of, first of all, kind of makes you think, yeah, it's, they could do something like this. So I, I, I stayed quiet for a very long time up until I was about 18 is when I spoke. When I didn't even speak, I had to write a letter. I wrote a letter to my dad because it had really affected our relationship i went from being daddy's girl to the rebel the black mm. sheep of the family and for him he just didn't get it you know it because it i it, it shaped who i became i became very rebellious i was just doing all sorts of things all through high school primary school i started taking alcohol when i was 13 years old i don't know if my parents knew that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i started drinking at that age i was just you know doing all sorts of things getting into one relationship the next things like that and it just affected who I became as a person, you know, you yeah. become um, promiscuous, you become, uh, and you, it's like you're trying to take control of your life, but you're really hurting yourself. You want to mm -hmm. feel like, you want to bring some form of worth yes. to yourself, but mm -hmm. it's, you're taking, you're devaluing yourself in some kind of way, because in your mind, you're telling yourself, I'm damaged goods. Yeah. This person has destroyed, first of all, taken away my virginity at a very, very um, yeah. young age. Yeah. So who's going to want to be with me? Um, even if I tell people, would they even believe me now? Yeah. You know what I mean? There's, there's just so much that goes on in your mind. And trying to block that also, you, you, you use all sorts of different things to try and block the thoughts, the mm -hmm. dreams, the recurring dreams, the memories. You, you, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just, it you, you kind of feel like so much is stripped away from you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you start to not care, mm -hmm. you know, to an extent. It's just like you want to die. I remember, I mean, I thank God for having grown up in a, in a, with a Christian background because at some point I remember being told if you, if you, if you kill yourself, you're going to go straight to hell. And, mm -hmm. and that's the one thing that kept me from killing, my, <laughs> from killing myself because I didn't want to go to hell. Yeah. If I didn't know that, I probably would have taken my life because I, I'd always just sit, sit on my bed and be like, God, take me. I don't want to mm -hmm. take my own life right. because I don't want to go to hell. How long did that go on? From six years? From six up until, I would say I started my healing when I was around 21. Yeah, because I think at the point when I gave my life to God and I started, you know, serving God is when I started to experience true healing. Mm -hmm. But from that point, it was just crazy. And and you're dealing with this alone in your mind, you know. You're dealing with this. Nobody else knows what's going on. 
and you expect you kind of expect people to understand but they don't because they don't they don't really know what what you're feeling right. you know and yeah. and uh, unfortunately like in her case you've told people and they're not reacting the way right. you expect yeah. them to react right. yeah. it, it makes it even worse it does. for me it was a situation where I, I want them to understand but because of the fear of speaking because with the fear of speaking out I can't really they can't really do anything they don't really know what's what's going on and thank god when i did speak out to my parents they they confronted you the first people you told you. yes okay. they confronted the situation and um when the abuser was confronted he called me and said oh he said in a very sarcastic way he says um i've been told i'm the one that caused certain things to not go right in your life and the line cut <laughs> and, <laughs> and i'm just like at that point, I realized I'm never, I'm, I'm probably never gonna get an apology, no. and I think we, no. we spoke about this earlier. But I needed to forgive for mm-hmm. my own personal yes. fear. Yeah. yeah, and after letting that go, is when I started to experience the killing because I realized I put a lot of myself on hold. I put a lot of my life on hold because of that one particular. Thing. I, I needed to know that it doesn't define who I am. Mm-hmm. It doesn't define who I'm capable of becoming also right. and it, it's it's not a barrier anymore right you know I needed to let let go of that mindset and just get to a place where I'm able to live my life be happy get into a relationship and be happy because yeah. that also affects the relationships you get into mm-hmm. because to some extent everybody looks like an abuser so yeah. even in mm-hmm. friendships mm-hmm. even like with female friends yep guy friends whatever there's always that element where you feel like you're being taken advantage of right to some extent and you start to shy away from from building relationships with okay. people let me just continue yeah. so we take a break yeah and we can continue chatting up okay so uh stay tuned to the channel we're still chatting with diane and she all right welcome back i'm still chatting with uh diane and she so, uh, having uh, hearing your stories, and I'm thinking that that's a lot to take in. Even for for a parent, I'm I'm a parent. I've got a daughter, and right. I wouldn't ever want to, even just for my nieces or anybody I know, go right. through such a thing. Right. You're thinking I would kill this person, and when you told your parents, what did they tell you? How was their reaction? Um, Obviously, they were very, especially my dad, I, I feel like he was very disappointed mostly in himself because I think to an extent he felt like he had failed me. He didn't protect he you. He didn't protect me. He wasn't there for me. But I remember he was so angry. He, he, I think if he had, he was in a different town. If he had the opportunity, if he was in mm-hmm. Osaka at the time, he yeah. probably would have harmed this person because he yeah. was very furious. He, he just mm-hmm. couldn't believe hearing this. And, and it's... Um, I mean, I was happy that he reacted that way because I didn't think he would believe me, especially it having been such a long time ago. I was happy he reacted, and that was also that also helped part of my healing. You know, my mom also um, she was obviously disappointed because she, you know, they trust that you trust someone to take care of your child. You trust that they would, because they're family, they would not do something yeah. this evil, but. It, it also kind of makes you alert and even me I have a son but even him being a boy I'm just mm-hmm. like I'm always checking up on him and always telling him he's, he's three going on four like nobody should touch you yeah, like right. boys even boys yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. there are no exceptions you know? yeah I, I, it's 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 yeah it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay so um I'm thinking you uh you told your mother and she didn't seem to protect you Mm-mm. how is your relationship now with her yeah. um it's it's very superficial. It's very um, just respect level, yeah, very cordial. Right. There's no real intimate relationship that you have, that yeah. bond that you have with a mom, mm-hmm. that you're supposed to have with your right. mom. Like I'm pretty sure you have with your mom yeah. and you have with your daughter. Yeah. Uh, I don't have that with her. Um, for a particular reason is that she's still with him. Yeah. So she's still with him today. Uh, I am not going to condone him being around me. I have chosen to put myself away. I've right. chosen to stay away. Yeah. And unfortunately, we were not we're not ever probably ever able to have that type of relationship, yeah. that close relationship. For as long as he's yeah. around. Yeah, right. for as long as he's around and she keeps choosing him. Yeah. 
And I feel like since you've been, you were young and since I was young, we've been trying to reclaim ourselves. Right. We've been trying to reclaim our power and doing it the wrong way. Drugs, alcohol, right, yeah. um, right. you know, delinquency. I used to skip school. I, one time in grade nine, I skipped the whole year. I only went wow. three days. Wow, wow. Yeah, three days in grade nine. I'm just, it was just, just like you, drugs, alcohol. I was just rebellious. I didn't know how to get my power back that he yeah. took from me. And that's all of us, all of us, that's all we're trying to do is reclaim our power. Our power. Yeah. We're just right. doing it the wrong way. We're doing it the wrong way. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I guess that's why Renewed Strength is coming on board. Correct. To such people. Mm -hmm. I, I like that you had the initiative to think about something like that because our society, normally, I don't think we take this the way it's supposed to be taken. Mm -hmm. Right. From. Uh, I see there was a story on social media that was trending about the girl who was uh, abused by mm -hmm. I saw that, a boyfriend, yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then people were like, what was she doing at the boyfriend's house? Right. Does it mean Victim that when somebody blaming. comes, yeah. like, you have to take a risk? No. no means no. I always say, exactly. where somebody's exactly. drunk or what? Exactly. No means no. So, yeah. So I really like that you're taking up that step. But going forward, you, you, you were married young and uh, did you try yeah. to say, I'm going to get married again and see I've or tried. <laughs> no, I used to think that we have to wait until we're healed, but right, that's yeah. not it. No, uh, healed, healed trauma is through safe relationships. Right. Safe relationships through friendships, through you know romantic relationships, um, sibling relationships, uh, family that are like cousins, aunties, uncles, those type of relationships. It's healed through safe relationships, and. I never, never, ever deprived myself of a relationship. If I felt safe that I can move forward right. with this person, I did. Yeah. The problem was I never believed anything they told me. Whether they, they loved me, you know, I love you, I care for you, I never believed it. I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't. How can I? Who, how can someone love me? Right. How? Right. You know, I, this has happened to me. He's gonna think, oh, it's uh, oh, I wanted it. He's gonna think, oh, this and that. Mm -hmm. But the right person will understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. The right person will say it's not your fault, and mm -hmm. what happened to you was not your fault, and yeah. it's sick. He's sick, and so unfortunately, my relationships didn't last. I, you know, I've been divorced now two times, and the the effects of my mental health illnesses has really put a strain on my relationship. So unfortunately, sometimes things don't work out. Yeah. But it does have a huge, huge factor. Yeah. Did you wait to heal for you, like when you met your husband, were you at a point where you had already healed or he helped you heal? I had, I had started my healing mm -hmm. um, and I, I felt like I was, I had arrived. I felt like I was there 100%, but then um, I was telling her earlier that later on, as the years have gone by, I've kind of realized that I'm still healing. Mm -hmm. I'm still learning certain things because there's certain, you know, situations where you find maybe even in, in a disagreement, you start to kind of want to shield yourself and you, 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 you react a certain way and then you realize this is because you're being triggered. Yeah. I, I kind of switched off to the idea that I could ever be triggered. Mm -hmm. But then now I've realized that it's possible that even now I could be triggered, but then how I handle it, right. how I handle being triggered is different from how I handled it before. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, before we get to the end of the show, I would want you to uh, just speak to somebody, a victim or somebody who knows a victim and they need help. Maybe they don't know how to help them. What would you tell such a person? I don't know who will go first. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> I think, I think the most, the biggest part for me is the people who are being, who, who people are opening up to, especially mothers. Mm -hmm. In our culture, it's, it's, it's very unfortunate that, that, like you, people are protecting the, the perpetrators, they're protecting the, the abusers. It should be a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Once you hear it, whether the child is, I mean, there's been incidences where maybe a child, very few, cases where a child maybe just doesn't like a person or they, right. they, they're trying to get attention and they'll make, make a story up like that. But then before you can go to the conclusion of this is being made up, mm -hmm. your first reaction should be, let me get help. Let me find out if this is yeah. really true. Let me, you know, let me find out how to help the child rather, not even if this is really true. Let, how do I help this child? How do I move away from this situation? If it means 
moving out of the house, yeah. leaving your partner for a little bit or whoever it is that, that's, you know, abusing the child, reporting them to the police, that should be your first instinct mm -hmm. as opposed to what if they're lying, yeah. you know? That shouldn't be the first thing that comes to yeah. your mind. Um, people, check, check on your children, check mm -hmm. boys, girls, check on them each and every day, find out what's going on, ask them these questions. I mean, we're talking about we're teaching kids about using condoms. We can teach them about protecting themselves from being sexually right. abused. Let them know that if anybody touches them inappropriately, they should, you know, speak out mm -hmm. and they should create a safe environment where children should. Sometimes people don't say because they don't really feel trust. Safe. Right. They don't, don't trust feel that safe. they're going to be believed, first yeah. of all. It's like, will they hear me out? Will they believe, you know? People are being threatened, so please create an environment um, and a relationship with your children where they're free and they're safe to come and they feel safe to come and talk to you. Right. Yeah. Um, I just have a few things to say. You know, uh, first and foremost, it's not your fault. Right. The survivor. It's not your fault. It's absolutely one hundred, one thousand percent the abuser's fault. I want to make. I want to emphasize the point that forget about seeking an apology from the abuser. Right. Forget about that. They're never going to apologize. They're not remorseful. Focus on your healing because with your healing comes freedom. Freedom from all of the things that you're being afflicted by. Yeah. You're, you're, I get it. You want to reclaim your power. I get that. We all do. We've lost it. We want it back mm -hmm. so desperately. But the things that are happening, the things that you're doing is not the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Come okay. and see us. So we need strength work. We're, we're, we're working one come and Yes, so Renew Strength Zambia uh, on Facebook, Renew Strength Zambia. We have a page, uh, we have Twitter, we have Instagram, is Renewed Strength, and then I think Twitter is Renew Strength Zambia, and we also have a website, renewstrength.com. Okay, so just in case uh, somebody, I just forgot this, somebody uh, is wondering why you are interested in uh, launching this organization in Zambia. Maybe they didn't watch our previous uh, interview, just mm -hmm. uh, explain that, why you chose oh, I've. I didn't really choose Zambia, Zambia chose me. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I feel very strongly about Zambia because my children are half Zambian. They come here, they visit, and then I'm always hearing, oh, she's by this auntie's house, oh, she's by this uncle's house. Well, who are these aunties and uncles? Right. I am a person who has been traumatized by sexual abuse, and I certainly don't want my children to, to be afflicted. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important for me to know that she's in a safe environment. Okay, great. Thank you so much guys for coming and Thank for opening you. up. It's not yes, always no. that people want to open up about <laughs> such. Yes. Yeah. All right, guys, I hope you've uh, learned one or two things and uh, I hope this we can finally reach a time where, where we can say numbers are reduced because numbers have gone up. Just yes. recently numbers were released and uh, Lusaka was open, guys. Mm -hmm. We need to end this thing. Let's support each other. Let's protect each other. Boys and girls, they all need our yes. protection. Right. So let's show love. Let's show love, guys. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you so much, guys, for coming. Through. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Yeah, right. I'm honored. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the episode. Bye-bye.